we already knew that we already knew that San Diego State and SMU were the favorites here. But could there be more? What happens if negotiations between San Diego State, SMU, and the Pac-12 fall apart? Uh, what if they? What if the conference wants to jump to more than twelve teams? Well, per John Canzano, and you can read his stuff at johncanzano.com, uh, Fresno State has had short interactions with the Pac-12 per a well-placed conference source. Uh, Klyovkov has not visited the campus yet. California's Central Valley actually includes 2.3 million TV homes, which is more than San Diego State's edition brings. Now, that part is certainly attractive, but as Canzano states, uh, Fres- uh, Fresno's close proximity to the Bay Area may make Stanford and Cal uneasy. Now, that makes sense, considering Fresno is only like 160 miles away from Palo Alto. Uh, at the same time, I don't think Fresno is going to be recruiting the same kind of student athletes that Stanford and Cal will be. Like, maybe maybe I'm wrong on that. Uh, but this is also an issue for Boise State, who definitely doesn't bring the same number of households. I think it's only around like 510,000 or 520, whatever it is. Uh, but it is a much more well-known brand than any of the potential expansion targets that we're already talking about. The issue here is that Boise could be vetoed because certain Pac-12 schools recruit against the Broncos. Like Boise is less than 300 miles from Pullman, about 350 to Salt Lake City, and uh, less than 500 from Seattle, Corvallis, and Eugene. Uh, on the academic side, and, and by this point, we all understand how important academics and research are to the presidents in the Pac-12, uh, but Boise State is looked at as basically a junior college, right, by the remaining Pac-12 institutions. And Boise State fans do not get mad at me for that. I'm just telling you the truth. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. Uh, pushing Boise State in expansion could actually upset the biggest brands left in the conference. And it, honestly, Klyovkov's job right now is to not only keep the remaining 10 schools together, uh, but make sure that Oregon and Washington are happy. Like, that's what you didn't do with USC and UCLA, right? That, I mean, that's that's it. All right, so what about UNLV, right? The football success has not been there. They don't bring a lot as far as television households, only about 750,000. But it is a city and a region that is rapidly growing. Uh, They now have an NFL team. The Pac-12 championship has been moved to Allegiant Stadium. There's a plethora of potential sponsorship opportunities there, along with the fact that Klyovkov was an executive at MGM before taking over the commissioner's role with the conference. Uh, UNLV is certainly investing in their football program. They just fired Marcus Arroyo, who by all accounts appeared to have the program headed in the right direction after three years. Uh, But they hired former Arkansas defense coordinator and Missouri head coach Barry Odom. You know, it seems like a reasonable candidate here. So why is Fresno or Boise or UNLV, et cetera, even in play? Like if San Diego State and SMU are the favorites, that moves the league back up to uh, 12 teams. Uh, why would they be looking at even more, especially if the rumors are true, that you know Oregon, Washington, et cetera, are not in favor of expansion? Well, if the Pac-12 media rights negotiations are contingent on having uh, plenty of inventory, then the more teams, the better, I guess. Uh, Canzano uh, stated this as well, and I'm quoting, I'm told per a source that one of the media rights partners the Pac-12 is engaged with is looking for, quote, some tonnage. The unnamed entity would like to beef up the inventory. This sounds a lot like Amazon, which needs content for the sports app it floated a while ago. Now, how much inventory are we talking about here? Uh, With only 10 teams, once you move into the conference late, that would only be, what, five games at most per weekend? Now, while that's great for uh, making sure each game could be in a specific time window, let's say Friday night, uh, three staggered during the afternoon and evening, and then one late Saturday, uh, it's not great for a streamer that's looking for inventory, right? Especially on weekends when teams get a bye week, that cuts the number down to like four games or fewer. Uh, So if the Pac-12 just adds two teams in expansion, going from 10 teams to 12, that bumps the inventory from 75 games per season up to 90, assuming a nine-conference game schedule. Now, along with, uh, you know, better odds that you'll get at least one decent matchup each weekend, right? Uh, so let's let's hit on that for a little bit longer. Like, how absurd is it that the Pac-12 is in a position where, in order to become appealing to potential media rights partners, the conference is having to go and look at expansion options? Like, this is mind-blowing stuff. Like, absolutely. My- anyway, let, so stepping away from, from the troubles there, uh, there is also the thought that the Pac-12 could add Fresno and Boise to keep the Big 12 from adding them and derailing future media rights negotiations. Uh, we all know that the Big 12 commissioner, Brett Yormark, has stated publicly several times that they want to get into the fourth time window, which, of course, is the Pacific time zone. I don't know that the Pac-12 is in a position to just add everybody that might be a possibility for the Big 12, but it is something to pay attention to. 
Like, if the Pac-12 streaming experiment does not go well, the next media rights negotiations are going to be really, really difficult for George Glavkoff and company. That's that's the biggest issue. If the Big 12 starts adding a bunch of those teams from out west, they have some of that late-night inventory that some of these linear television networks would want if the streaming thing doesn't work and Amazon decides to get out of it, there's nowhere left for the Pac-12 to go after that. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Hey, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and of course, jump in the comments. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app, and make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE, and the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.